Hey everybody, Pete here with the River Kings and today we're going to talk to you a little bit about paddles. What makes a good paddle? What makes the correct paddle for you? Some of the aspects of a paddle that we should look at, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about length, blade design, shaft and shaft design, weight, and materials the paddle is made out of. This is my Werner Sherpa. It's a whitewater paddle. This is what I do my whitewater paddling with lately. It is a good paddle, all carbon fiber. It's got a uh, bent shaft design. As you can see, the shaft is a little bit, uh, you know, crooked in places, and I'll show you the reason why. If I hold my paddle out, you can see the bend in my wrist versus when I hold it at the thing. It's a little less bent at the handle, and it's made to reduce wear and tear on your wrist. Um, I don't think it really does a whole lot other than that. Keeps your hands in a little bit more, uh, a little more natural position. It's a great paddle. I love it. Uh, I don't need the bent shaft design, but it is a good design and I, I've gotten used to it, which is my next point. Before we go any further, you can get used to any paddle out there. So when someone says, what's the best paddle for me? That's a very subjective question that's going to have a very subjective answer. And there is no best paddle. It's just a bunch of different aspects of different paddles are going to go in to make your paddle better or worse for you, if that makes sense. Let's start at the bottom of the barrel. This is the Advance. I don't even know what brand that is, but it is a brand, I guess, or at least the name of a paddle. Aluminum. Doesn't sound hollow. May have some foam in there. I don't know. A couple of rivets and a big plastic paddle. You know, it's the same paddle both sides. There's no bend to the blade or anything. This is the bottom of the barrel. This is not the paddle you're going to want to end up with, but it may be the paddle you start with. So if the budget does not allow anything else or you just simply don't have an option for a better paddle at the time, it's going to get you down the river. It's just not the one you want eventually. It's kind of heavy. Uh, there's no shaping to the, to the shaft at all where with a good paddle, it'll be shaped a little bit where your hand goes to let you orient and know that, hey, I've got the paddle where I need to have it and it's a little bit more comfortable. Uh, for torters, uh, touring paddlers, it's not quite as important to know where you are as far as organizing your thoughts. But for a whitewater paddler, sometimes the paddle is nearly ripped out of your hand or twist or is backward behind your head or you're pulling it out from somewhere weird because things get a little crazy in whitewater. And it's nice to be able to grab a paddle with your eyes closed underwater and know, okay, there's my paddle. Because when you attempt to do a roll, if the paddle's not oriented right, it's not going to work. So, that being said, this is the Cheapo Deluxe. Maybe where you are now, everyone that starts paddling usually has a cheap paddle at some point. This is not the one you want to end up with. This is my Werner Skagit. It is a middle-of-the-road paddle. Uh, it's a good company. Werner's a great company, makes good paddles. This is one of their middle-of-the-road paddles. It's not too expensive. It's not too cheap. It's about $130, $140, bucks, I believe. Uh, and it is feathered. As you can see, the blade's offset. But this is adjustable feather, so you can pull it out. Go back. Now we're at no feather. Some people like no feather. Uh, a lot of the cheapest paddles are, have options for no feather. No feather paddle, uh, for me, the only advantage would be if there was a big tailwind and you wanted to use the blade like a sail, even as you're paddling, where when you feather, and you can feather pretty steep up to 60 degrees, as I come through, you see I'm paddling with my right, the left side's cutting through the wind. That's the real purpose for the feather. I like to keep mine on a 45 right hand feather. That means the right hand controls the blade and this hand can slide as you know as needed to make the blade enter or exit the water uh, correctly so this is the middle of the road it's about half as heavy as that cheap one i showed you uh, which makes a big difference in the end of the day pretty long i think this is a 220 centimeter uh, which is going to make you need to have a more horizontal paddling style and that's a that's an american paddling style a lot of the europeans want a more vertical entry and exit of the paddle with the water and that is going to necessitate a shorter paddle and then you have the paddle blade a little different than the white water paddle here i'll put it up against my white water paddle 
and you can see that this paddle is much shorter, about 15 or 16 inches shorter. The blade is fatter and a little shorter. That's to give you a really good aggressive purchase in the white water. Uh, this paddle has nearly the same surface area. It possibly is the same, I've never measured them, but it's elongated and being longer it gives you more leverage. This one being fatter it gives you a lot, uh, a lot of leverage up close to the boat. Now on to the good stuff. This is my epic Oscar Chalupski Signature Series uh, Touring Paddle. This is a fantastic paddle. I love it. It weighs about 20 ounces. It's, uh, it's again about half as heavy as that Skagit. So it's about a quarter as heavy as that Advance. But uh, it's got a good blade design, all carbon fiber. If you could just hold this and see how lightweight it really is, it's just, there's nothing there. I mean, you can paddle all day and feel like you're doing nothing. And until you actually use a paddle of this caliber, you really don't know what you're missing. And so that's why I say, got your paddle blade design, you have your length of your paddle, you have all that good stuff, but the most important factor in a good paddle is the lack of weight. And unfortunately, that requires a lot of money. So the lighter the paddle, the more it's going to cost. You're going into all carbon uh, uh, makeup again, and it's going to be a lot stiffer on the, on the water. The blade's stiffer, the shaft's stiffer. So that's going to cause you to be more efficient with your paddle stroke. Now this paddle is shorter by a considerable margin than my Skagit, and that's going to force me into a vertical paddling technique, which is neither here nor there. So that's why when someone says, what size paddle do I need? And they say, well, how tall are you? And you know what? There's no good answer here. It's what kind of boat do you have? Do you have a wide boat? You're going to have to have a longer paddle. Do you have a narrow boat? You can, if you want, have a shorter paddle. Do you like a vertical paddling style? Shorter paddle. Do you like a more relaxed paddling style? A longer paddle. Now, advantages to the longer paddle are, since the paddle blade is further away from you and you're pulling your stroke, you get a lot more leverage per stroke. Downsides is if your boat does not have a big keel or does not track straight on its own, that stroke is going to be like a sweep stroke. If you know anything about paddling, that's going to cause the right or left turn in your boat depending on which side you're stroking on. If I'm sweep stroking on the right, my boat's going to turn left. If I'm more vertical, it's going to give me a little bit more straight on directional travel, which is why whitewater paddles are a lot shorter. You can't be sweep stroking everything. You have to be vertical in your stroke to go forward if you want to go forward. So, most important for me when I'm looking at a paddle is the weight for a touring paddle. For a whitewater paddle, most important aspect is going to be all of them. You want a lightweight, you want an extremely robust paddle that's not going to break. I've had paddles break on me in rapids, in class 4 plus rapids, um, and that could be uh, a negative experience. And then you're left with a one-sided paddle or a paddle that's flopping or no paddle. You're trying to roll up with your hands, which can be done, but it just introduces uh, some things you may not want to have to contend with. Touring paddles, you're probably not going to be breaking your paddle off doing some normal touring. Uh, if you're sea kayaking in rock gardens and you take an ugly, you know, an ugly track over some rocks, you end up upside down or you get it wedged in a coral reef or something, yes, you, you can break a paddle no matter what style of paddling you're doing but robustness isn't as important with touring as it is with whitewater. That being said, the carbon fiber is still a good bet. It's going to be a lot stronger uh, relatively per weight than all the other materials. So the cheap end materials on a paddle blade are aluminum or any other kind of metal. The higher end materials are going to be all carbon. But then you have all kind of mix with plastic blades, fiber blades, fiberglass blades, carbon here, plastic there, carbon, carbon, aluminum, plastic. There's a, a myriad of designs out there. You want the most expensive one that your budget will allow. The reason for this is the most expensive one is almost always the lightest one. So go to your local paddle shop, get in there, pick up some of the low grade, mid grades, and then go ahead and pick up the most expensive paddle they have and just see how it feels. You'll be amazed at the difference it makes. Now on the water, at the end of the day, if you're doing 10, 15, 20,000 strokes on a long day, the weight of that paddle is going to play a significant role in reducing the fatigue on your arms, your shoulders, your joints, all that. 
Above all else will be the weight of that paddle blade. The length, you can adjust to it. My son uses this when he goes out because it's so light he can manipulate it. Uh, with a longer, heavier paddle, it's just going to wear him out and he's not as able to move that paddle through the water as freely. Another aspect of paddle length and paddle blade design is your stroke rate. If you have a smaller blade and a smaller paddle, shorter, then you're going to have a faster stroke rate. If you have a wider paddle blade and your paddle's longer, it's going to be a much slower stroke rate. This is why people say if you're a smaller frame person or you're not a real aggressive paddler, then you need a smaller blade with a shorter paddle. Paddling all day and you're really just pulling every stroke by, it's going to wear a smaller frame person out a lot faster than a bigger frame person. For an example, if you threw a stick in the water and pulled it through the water, anybody can do that with almost no resistance. And as you paddle through the water and you see those two swirlies on either side of your blade, and I'm sure you've all noticed that at least at some point, that's the slippage of water going around your paddle blade. In other words, your paddle is going through the water and not delivering 100% effectiveness. Some water's getting around the paddle. The bigger blade, the less water gets around the paddle, requiring more strength to pull it through the water. Now, that just means you're gonna have to paddle slower. A bigger person can still horse it through the water but he's using more muscles. A smaller person, if they want to have the same stroke rate, needs a smaller paddle blade. That's what that's all about. A small person can, sure, he can use or she can use a very large paddle. It's just gonna require them to have a slower stroke rate. The only real way to know what the best paddle is for you is to go out and test a few. Now, there's gonna be people that try to sell you on different aspects of paddling, but I'm telling you, you may like a more horizontal paddle blade, you may like a more vertical, but you are going to like a lighter weight paddle. Take my word for it, go out there, try some paddles out, and get the most expensive lightweight paddle your budget can allow. Thanks for watching.